guys welcome back to the channel so today we're going to be talking about this the new ltd snake bite and kuyu camo finish so for those of you that don't know the esp ltd snake bite shape is uh, james hetfield's signature guitar came out back in 2011 so it's been out for a few years but this new finish is uh, just debuted a couple weeks ago so we're going to do a full review of this um, full disclosure i was not paid by ltd i had to pay full price for this guitar so it's going to be an unbiased look at the quality the sound the feel and you know the fit and finish of what i think is a pretty cool guitar so let's get into it so the current pricing on these guitars is 1900 dollars, which um, for an indonesian guitar is not cheap obviously but the esp version of this is i think selling for over seven thousand dollars now so in comparison to that it actually seems like a pretty good deal um, I should also note, I, I have owned the ESP Snakebite, not the camo version, but I did have one of the, uh, the matte black, satin black finish ones. So I am able to kind of compare that. I don't have it with me. I sold it a while back, but I had it for a couple of months. So um, it's going to be interesting to see how this one stacks up to the custom shop version of the same guitar. So as far as the specs and features on this one, we've got the mahogany body, mahogany neck, three-piece mahogany neck, um, Makassar ebony fretboard, extra jumbo frets, obviously got the EMG headset. Those are uh, Hetfield signature pickups. And then we have two volumes, three-way switch. I believe these are Tone Pros, and we've got locking tuners as well. Also on the back, we've got control cavity, and then we have a battery compartment. So the first big difference I notice between this guitar and the custom shop version is gonna be the neck. Um, the custom shop one I had had uh, ESP's typical jet black ebony. This is more of a brown streaky, uh, you know, Makassar ebony. So a little bit different look. Um, the inlays on this is some kind of acrylic on the custom shop. I think it's mother of pearl. And the actual feel of the neck is, uh, it's a little bit thinner on this one. I remember the ESP version had a little bit more of a rounded profile. It wasn't a big neck by any means, but this one feels a little bit flatter on the back, uh, a little bit thinner. So Still got the same basic feel though with the, the satin finish and everything, extra jumbo frets. So everything else is pretty pretty in line with the ESP specs beyond that. Uh, the other thing to note, the ESP version is a one piece mahogany neck versus the three piece. As far as the quality control, um, right out of the box, I'm pretty impressed with this. And I'm, I should preface by saying, I haven't done anything to this guitar. So if you order a brand new one, this is, this is how they should come. You know, I haven't done anything with the setup. I haven't treated the fretboard mess with the truss rod, anything like that. So right out of the box, you know, looking at the action, looks like the truss rod's good. There's optimal relief in the neck, no problem there. Um, top to bottom on the fretboard, there's really no buzzing, no dead spots, nothing like that, no sharp ends. So pretty impressed with, you know, the, the job they did with the fretboard. Then again, at, at you know, almost $2,000, really, it should be right. So another thing I want to talk about is the finish itself. So uh, when I bought this, I'll admit this was kind of an impulse purchase. I just, you know, I knew it was a hot item. Um, I liked the ESP one I had, and I definitely didn't want to spend $7,000 for the custom shop version of this. And I just thought, you know, it'd be cool to have a camo guitar for a while. I kind of missed the ESP one I had. Um, so when I bought it, I thought the graphic was only on the front. I know on the custom shop version, it's all over. It's on the back and everything. But I was surprised when it came in. The paint job actually extends to the sides to the bottom, um, even the sides of the headstock, which is nice. It's not on the back, but it's kind of cool that they, they made that pattern extend. So that makes it look a little bit more high end, a little more have that kind of custom vibe to it versus, you know, sometimes you see import guitars and the pattern just stops right there on that sharp line. And it kind of makes it kind of cheapens the uh, aesthetic of it. One other difference I just noticed um, between this one and the custom shop as well is going to be that battery compartment. The custom shop one has one of those little uh, push pull where you can just open it up. This one you have to actually unscrew uh, the cover to, to put the nine bolt in. So that would be a pretty easy upgrade if you did want to swap that out. But um, kind of cool though that from the factory the other one comes that way. So overall impressions with the QC on this one is is I would give it a 10 out of 10 honestly for the for the price point. I'm very impressed. Uh, exceeded my expectations. And I also, when I bought this, like I said, it was an impulse buy. I didn't do a whole lot of homework. I assumed it was made in Korea. I think the older LTD snake bites were, um, but this one is made in Indonesia. And I've, I've 
not had a lot of experience with Indonesian guitars. Um, I, I typically don't buy them or am really interested in most of them, but I got to say this one um, impressed me. And after hearing mixed reviews, you know, a lot of people say Indo is kind of hit or miss. They can be really good or they, the quality control can just be trash. This is one of the good ones. So um, if you're looking at getting one of these, I feel confident in saying that, you know, right out of the box, ESP or LTD did a really good job with this one. All right, so let's hear what this thing sounds like. So behind me, I've got a JP2C Mesa. I've got the Diesel VH4. I thought these seemed like the appropriate amps for this guitar. Um, so first we're gonna play through the JP2C, then through the Diesel, and then both at the same time. So the signal chain I've got here is an old Ibanez PUE5. This does a lot of things, but the main thing we're using it for is to just run two amps at the same time. Then we got a Decimator 2, which is gonna keep everything quiet. We got an MXR M77, which is gonna you know, boost everything, keep it nice and tight. We got the Kerr Cam at Wah, just cause it looks cool. And we got the tuner, cause you gotta be in tune. So let's check it out. JP2C first. <laughs> That sounded pretty good. Now let's see what the VH4 sounds like. <laughs> All right, so that's what they sound like individually. Now let's hear the VH4 and the JP2C together. All right, so that's what it sounds like with dirty tones. Kind of no surprise there. Um, I've had these pickups in a lot of my guitars and they always sound fantastic. So um, we knew that would do good heavy metal sounds, but how about cleans? This is like a Gunner collection first. I never play clean. So I busted out my old 1982 Roland Jazz Chorus 120 uh, solid state amp. This is the same one that James Hetfield uses or used. I'm sure he's owned a bunch of different ones, but 
this was the one he was known for uh, most of his clean tones. So let's give it a try and see what it sounds like. <laughs> So we're going to finish this video with hearing this guitar in the mix with some drums. Um, I used the VH4, the VHT Deliverance 120, and once again the JP2C on this track you're about to hear. So um, also, if you're interested in owning this guitar that I used in the demo, let me know. Um, I'm sure I'll, I'll be listing it for sale in the next few weeks. And uh, otherwise, thanks for tuning in. Enjoy.